Hey guys, it's Courtney here. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free, and there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or computer. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcast. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's literally everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Welcome to the Black Standard Podcast. The Black Standard Podcast is an Afrocentric, pan-African show that aims to normalize Black finance and wealth. And we share useful information on African history, current and global affairs, entrepreneurship, business, and Black culture and achievements. If you're looking to discover your roots while learning about the greatness hidden in the African race, or if you're from another race and you're interested in learning about our culture, then this podcast is perfect for you. Here at the Black Standard Podcast, we are all about raising the bar and setting the standard. Here is your host. Courtney Ann Wallace. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 10 of the Black Standard Podcast. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's episode, I'll be talking about black privilege. Yep, I said it, and you better get with it, black privilege. So stay tuned. So we're going to be getting into our daily mantra. And if you're new to the podcast, this is something that we do every single episode. So it goes like this. I am happy to be alive. My heart is clean. My mind is open. I'm ready to receive. So let's repeat. One, two, three. I am happy to be alive. My heart is clean. My mind is open. I am ready to receive. Our quote of the day is, growth is uncomfortable. You have to embrace the discomfort if you want to expand. And that is by Jonathan Majors. So, um, what is black privilege? Well, according to the legendary Urban Dictionary, black privilege is an easy way for people to believe that they aren't being racist by saying that black people have more privilege than they do when they themselves aren't innocent. In other words, Believing black privilege exists is like believing it rains when the clouds are angry. And so when someone says black privilege, they're most likely referring to stereotypes based off their own anger that we have, um, you know, something to ourselves, something of our own. And guys, before we move on, please be reminded that this podcast is not to bash a particular um, ethnic group, but it's actually to raise awareness and common concepts, common stereotypes, history, and opportunities surrounding people of color. Before we jump in, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've been uploading the full length of our guest interviews over on YouTube, and we recently put out exclusive content on the channel. So go and check that out, and I will leave the first link to one of our videos in the description box below. Now, today's episode is brought to you by ebony and the article that we're using as reference today was written in 2016 so i'm going to be getting into the opening statement of the article it says that lately the term black privilege has become increasingly popular in the world of intellectual conservatism black privilege is the concept that there is a set of societal advantages that people of color benefit from to which other ethnic groups do not have access Of all the benefits of black privilege, perhaps the most offered example is the hypothesis that black people get to be racist. They get to say anything they want about the other racial group, and they get to have historically black colleges and universities exclusively for black people. They get to go to meetings with the NAACP, which I mentioned in previous episodes. They even get their own TV network. I mean, what's with all of that, right? (laughs) Now, the entire theory of black privilege rests on the premise that there are certain things other racial groups cannot do, therefore it must be privilege. They're familiar, um, they always come with the angle that if white people did that, then it would be a problem. 
Every time black entertainment television occasionally raises its profile above the boundaries set for black awareness into larger spaces, some subset of white conservatives, particularly Stacey Dash, they always seem to have their feathers ruffled. Apparently, the sight of dark people congregating, creating, and congratulating without the permission of white people or the inclusion of others offends a lot of people. They feel obligated to put forth the same old recycled, tired argument, whether it's about historically black colleges, black groups, or award shows, and the questions are always the same. Why do we need this? Isn't that black privilege? And you know, the big question, if white people did that, you'd be mad. But... I think the most highlighted part of this article was when it made reference to the 2016 BET Awards, which gained a lot of attention. You know, um, Viacom's decision to simulate the show on a few of its other television stations, including MTV and Nickelodeon, raised the profile of the show, but simultaneously um, engendered pearl clutching and heebie-jeebies at the thought of blue-eyed, flaxen-haired, in the sense, tuning in to catch an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants or Catfish. And instead of having their eyeballs and souls ruined by the unimaginable sight of Negroes smiling and speaking in complete sentences. Even though that was enough to waken the throwers of the black privilege argument, what really ruffled their feathers was when Jesse Williams, you know, Bay from Grey's Anatomy, accepted the BET Humanitarian Award. And then he did a mic-dropping speech that left no stone unturned. Black people raised their fists while conservatives and white Twitter went off. <laughs> now, aside from the onslaught of the tweets accusing Jesse Williams of racism, because, you know, if a white person had said that about black people, it would be racist. Um... There were the perfunctionary think pieces that questioned why a, comp a company as big as Viacom needed to broadcast and award shows for black people across four different networks. I mean, why do they need all that attention? You know what I'm saying? According to them, it must be black privilege. Others posit that it took no courage for a black man to stand in a room full of black people and blame white people for the problems of black folks. They labeled it as black privilege because if a white person stood in a room of white people and blamed black people, well, you know the rest. Anyways, I used to play a game with myself. I'm quoting the author here. And they suggested that we try it sometime. There are only two steps. Take your remote control. Start at a random channel. Keep hitting the up channel button until you arrive on a channel with a black person who's not playing sports singing, or rapping. That's exactly why BET exists. That is exactly why we have the BET Awards. That's why there are HBCUs. That is why there is a NAACP or a Black Lives Matter movement. If black people held their breath waiting for America to fight for or include or educate or award them, we would have long perished by asphyxiation. And so maybe black privilege is a real thing, Maybe there are minor advantages to being black that white people can't take advantage of. But if we put BET, Black Lives Matter, HBCUs, and Jesse Williams in a pile and offered it to the black privilege hypothesizers in exchange for all the white presidents until seven years ago, 99% of you know every Supreme Court justice in the history of America, 99% of every congressman and senator ever elected to office that were dark-skinned, every measurable social, economic, and political advantage that black people supposedly have gained, a majority presence in every educational institutional that black people supposedly have, which we don't, every statistical legal advantage in the justice system that we don't have, a white advantage in employment statistics, pay statistics, and also advancement statistics, even among those equally educated that black folks still don't get, ownership of almost every television network, movie studio, and major media outlet that black people don't own. Do you really think it's a fair trade? In fact, Jesse Williams' speech, it actually highlighted the opposite of black privilege. It showed us that even on a night when 965 other channels offer everything from Game of Thrones to college baseball, 
even during a time when nominees for president, both from political parties, have alternately referred to black people as super predators and thugs. Even while every other night, another police officer is either acquitted or not charged after pumping bullets into a black body. Some people still cannot bear to see us on TV smiling, receiving an award. Black privilege is a myth. It is a myth, okay? And, you know, it's really just white privileged people lamenting whenever there is one thing that they can't get in on, there's something that they can't control or contain. Um, it's like driving through an empty parking lot and then complaining because you don't get to park in the handicapped spot. It is insidious, and it's also greedy. And that, my friend, is racism because no one ever asks why country music, comedians, or Christians get their own networks or award shows just black folks and to be clear if white people felt this way or even wrote what jesse williams said the other night then we wouldn't need the bet awards in the first place okay so that is the end of the article remember to subscribe to the channel whether it's from youtube or apple podcast or wherever you're catching this if you're listening on apple podcast don't forget to rate this podcast as it helps our podcast tremendously i'll see you guys soon Thank you for tuning in to the Black Standard Podcast. Follow us on social media and join the community. You can find us on Instagram at the Black Standard underscore JA, Facebook at the Black Standard JA, and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find the recorded version of our podcast along with additional content. Until our next episode, see you soon.